good to see you here this morning. I hope you've had a great week and we've come together again on this first Sunday in December ready to worship the Lord. And I know your houses are probably decorated with Christmas like mine is. And we're all thinking about the birth of Jesus Christ. And we are here to begin celebrating that today. We've had several birthdays this week. I'm glad to have my parents here. My dad had his birthday this week on Thursday on December the 1st. So, uh, dad, happy birthday to him. And Jeremy had a good Michigan win for his birthday last night. So, he's a big Michigan fan. And then Isaac's birthday is today. So. And I, that's the three that I know. If it's your birthday, too, happy birthday to you. That's just the three that I knew about. So, uh, Anyway, I want to wish them happy birthday. Thanks for being in the Lord's house today. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer, and then we'll get started with our time of worship. Thank you once again for being here and after our guest. We're just so very thankful that you chose to be with us today. Let's bow our heads down in prayer. Heavenly Father, how good it is to be in your presence today, Lord, as we remember your word that where two or three are gathered in your name, you're there with us also, Father. We thank you for the good crowd, far more than two or three in here this morning, Father. We thank you for each and every person that's here. And Father, may our hearts be open to receive what you would speak to us today in song, what you'd speak to us in the, today through your word. But Father, may, may we in turn offer you praise through our word and through our song today. Father, it's an exciting time of the year, an exciting time when we think about the love you have for us. As John 3.16 says, you love us so much that you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. And for that, Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks today. And we worship you in spirit and truth. And it's in that precious, holy name of Jesus we pray. And amen. amen. Why don't you stand with us now? We're going to sing a few Christmas songs. I believe you can, you'll never be able to sing along with us this morning. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here until the
Billboard song as we sing, What Child Is This? She was singing and she was just going to town praising the Lord. It had to be. I mean, I don't think she could do the stuff that she was doing in the secular world. She was raising her hands. She was just having her great time. And that convicted me for a bit. Hearing all this stress and all this stuff that's going on, all the busyness of Christmas and all the things that we do, you can still find time to praise our Lord. You can still find time. So that way, a good smile on my face. I was like, it didn't matter. When I got there, they had gasoline. They had to stand outside for 45 minutes, so it wasn't happening. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, that little old lady, she blessed my son. Uh, just praising the Lord, just in all things. She was sitting there by herself. I said, I wonder, what's, I wonder what I look like. I'm going down the road singing. I don't think I'm shouting and all that. But uh, she uh, she was having a good time. Listen to the words of this song, people. This song features Eddie on the box.
is a trying master. Who is 
be? We'll answer these questions today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us enough to send your Son to this world. And Father, I pray that if there be anybody hearing this message today, whether in this place or perhaps online sometime later, who can't answer the question who Jesus is, what Christmas is all about, that you would, through your Holy Spirit, speak clearly to them today. But not only that, Lord, I pray that for those of us who have claimed a personal relationship with your Son, Jesus Christ, we would be reminded this morning of just who Jesus is, why He came, why we have great reason to celebrate. So as always, Lord, hide me, get me out of the way, and you speak to me, through me, through your Holy Spirit now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So the first thing we're going to look at today is the first line of the song we sang a little bit ago. And there's an outline in your bulletin if you'd like to follow along. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? And we can find the answer to that in Luke chapter 1. We'll be in Luke most of the day today. Luke chapter 1, if you'd like to turn there now. And, and verse 26 through 31 is where we are going to read first. Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee in Nazareth, to a virgin to talk to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. And then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. So the first who, you might say of the nativity scene, the first who we see here is Mary. She's a simple girl. She's engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. And we really don't know a whole lot else about her, but... We do read here that the angel told her she was highly favored by God. She was blessed. So we can infer that Mary loved the Lord. Yet how confused she must have been at the time this announcement was brought to her by the angel. How confused she must have felt. There's a beautiful song called Be Born in Me that imagines how she might have responded in her heart. The lyrics go like this. Be born in me, be born in me. Somehow I believe that you chose me. I'll hold you in the beginning, you will hold me in the end. Every moment in the middle, make my heart your Bethlehem, be born in me. I'm not brave, I'll never be. The only thing my heart can offer is vacancy. I'm just a girl, nothing more, but I am willing. I am yours. I like those lyrics because... Not only do they show the, the confusion that Mary would have felt at this announcement made to her, but, but also the willingness to surrender and say, let, it, let this be for me then, O oh Lord. But, but it also reminds us that Jesus wants a place in our heart as well. And I want to he you to hear today that you too are highly favored by the Lord. You are highly favored by the Lord. You are. Just turn to your neighbor this morning for me and say, you are so loved by God. Would you turn to your neighbor and tell him that? Now tell your other neighbor, you are so loved by God. <laughs> Doesn't that feel good to tell somebody God loves them? And it's true, it's true. Now I'm no angel Gabriel for sure, and I'm no angel for sure, but I'm here to tell you today that you are highly favored by the Lord, and He wants His Son to live in you. How do I know that you are highly favored by God? I know it because of what He did for you. 1 John 4.10 tells us, This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. God loves you so much, for God so loved you that He sent His Son Jesus to earth. That he would one day be that atoning sacrifice for your sin so that you could receive him in your heart and you yourself 
could be born again into eternal life. Mary was highly favored and blessed. And the Lord wants you to know this morning, you are highly favored. And you are blessed. And he showed that to each one of us by sending his son for us. And that's a reason to celebrate. That's a reason to celebrate Christmas. A reason to celebrate just as the angels did on the night that Jesus was born. Turn to Luke 2, chapter, uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. And the second thing we'll see today. Whom angels greet with anthems sweet. Whom angels greet with anthems sweet. Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. These angels that had surrounded the Father and surrounded the Son, Jesus Christ in heaven, are now here on earth, giving Jesus the praise, continuing their praise of the Son of God. Glory to God in the highest. Say it with me. Glory to God in the highest. Because God loved you enough to send His Son, glory to God in the highest. Because His Son, Jesus, became an atoning sacrifice for your sin on Calvary's cross, glory to God in the highest. Because you can be saved from hell and have eternal life in the presence of the Lord forever in heaven, glory to God in the highest. So let's get excited about that. Let's join the angels' chorus. Let our voices fill the air with the praise of glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Oh, the lights this time of year. The lights are marvelous. The presents are fabulous. The food is delicious. The excitement is tremendous. But the one in the middle of it all, church, is glorious. He is glorious. Glory to God in the highest. And the angels came to declare his glory. And to whom did they bring the announcement of the birth of Christ? Surely it was brought to the kings and the queens of the earth. Surely it must have been, must have been to those of a high stature in society. It wasn't though, was it? It was brought to some probably dirty men out in the field tending their sheep. The announcement of Christ came first, number three on your outline, while shepherds watch or keep him. While shepherds watch or keep him. Stay in Luke 2 and look down at verses 15 through 17. Luke 2, verses 15 through 17. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. The angels first told the shepherds about the birth of Christ. Let that sink in for a minute. God had sent the angels to the shepherds who were perhaps some of the meekest of society. Some of the poorest, some of the dirtiest, some of the least thought of, on the, at, at least thought of people. But God saw them. God saw them. And God sees you. God sees you and God knows you. And God loves you. And you may be sitting here today and you may feel insignificant. You may feel unloved. You may feel like everybody else in life is moving ahead and celebrating and you're just stuck in a rut. You may feel unimportant. You may feel unworthy. If so, you're exactly the kind of person that God likes to use for His glory. Like He did with the shepherds. Just as He did with these simple shepherds, God has big plans for you. No matter how low you feel about yourself. And He's got big plans for your life. <clears throat> These shepherds alone in the fields were some of the first missionaries that God used to go and tell the world about Jesus. They met baby Jesus and look at verse 17, what they do. Verse 17, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. They were the first ones to go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Oh, that we would follow their example. That we would make widely known the fact that Jesus is Lord. 
As I said, there are so many around us, right here, in the middle of the Bible Belt, who don't know what we know, and who don't have what we have. So many that haven't into, entered into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And as Christians, we have. And we know who He is. And so we, as simple as we may be, should make widely known the name of Jesus, as the shepherds did. And we're going to have a chance, church, next Sunday to support missionaries who are all over the world doing what shepherds did. Next week, we'll take our Lottie Moon Christmas offering for international missions. Those missionaries who have been called by God to go to places that you and I wouldn't want to go. To share the name of Jesus. Many places where their very lives are in danger for speaking the name of Jesus. And we have a chance to support them and get the name of Jesus all over this world. Our church goal is a thousand dollars. We can beat that easily, church, to support international missions. Let's give so that the name of Jesus can be shared in the whole world. For all the world needs to know the answer to that question we asked in song earlier. What child is this? And of course we know and we want to proclaim and share. The answer is this. This is Christ the King. This, this is Christ the King. Turn back one chapter in Luke, Luke chapter 1. And let's, let's look at verses 31 through 35. Luke chapter 1, beginning verse 31. <coughs> Excuse me. And behold, you'll conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now we'll discuss the miracle of the virgin birth in another message. But today, let's notice the fact that this angel left no doubt as to the identity of the child that Mary would give birth to. Here in five verses, we're given four names of this holy child. First, Jesus. His name is Jesus. And the angel says he will be called the Son of the Highest. He will be called the Holy One. He will be called the Son of God. So there's the answer to your question. What child is this? If you don't know Jesus, if you want to know what's the big deal about Christmas, there's four, four answers for you right now. He's the Son of the Highest. He's Jesus. He's the Holy One. He's the Son of God. And if we go on over to Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, we'll look at the angels telling the shepherds again about Jesus being born. We find that they give two more names for the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. He's a Savior. He's Christ the Lord. What child is this? He's Jesus. He's the Son of the Highest. He's the Holy One. He's the Son of God. He's the Savior. Don't miss that. He is Christ. The Lord, don't you love the name of Jesus? Doesn't that mean something to you today? That we come, that little baby laying in your manger in your in your nativity scene. It represents all of those things. He is the reason for the season. Let's not overlook who Jesus is. Jesus was a baby born to be a Savior. Born to be our Savior. An angel also appeared to the one. Mary was engaged to. The angel appeared to Joseph as well. And the angel gives Joseph and gives us another description of who this baby is. Turn back to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 20 and 21. <coughs> and we see fifthly this morning that the King of Kings salvation brings. Let loving hearts and throne him. The King of Kings salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. So let's look at this message to Joseph from the angel. Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, 
Do not be afraid to take you to take you near your wife. For that which conceived is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She'll bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he get this, for he will save his people from their sins. So Jim Joseph has not only told the name of Jesus, but he's told of the purpose of the birth of Jesus Christ. Now we're going to dig deeper into the whys of Christmas next week. I want to focus on the who's today. The angel says this. The angel says, God placed a baby in Mary's womb through the Holy Spirit. And you're going to name this child Joseph. You're going to name this child Jesus. Now, Jesus is a form of the Hebrew word Joshua or Yeshua, which means Savior. Imagine that. Yeshua, Savior. And the angel says to Joseph, you're going to name this child Yeshua. You're going to name this child Jesus Savior, for he will save their people from their sins. Oh my, are you kidding? A better idea of what Christmas is all about is the Holy Spirit reminding you today of the reason that we celebrate Jesus is the Savior. But personally, Jesus is your Savior. Amen? If you call upon his name to save you and come in your heart, forgive your sins, he is your Savior. He's the reason that we gather together each week. He's the reason we wake up on a cold Sunday morning and get out from under the covers and put on some clothes and come to worship Him, come to worship the Savior, Jesus Christ, and we celebrate right now because the Savior has come. And the Savior is the Son of God, and He is Lord third of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we can this morning rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee. Look at Matthew chapter 1, verses 22 and 23 now. <clears throat> so all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. God came to us, in the form of his son Jesus. I love the line from the song we sang earlier. He came and he breathed our air. Isn't that something to think about? He, come and, he came to earth and he breathed our air. And God, he came then that God is with you right now. He's still Emmanuel. Psalm 139 encourages us, us with that fact. Psalm 139 beginning in verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I, can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall upon me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide you, hide, hide, you, hide me from you. But the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. He is Emmanuel. He is God with you. He's with you through thick and thin, isn't he? And he's with you through the good times, and he's with you through the bad times. Listen, he is Emmanuel. He is God with you, and he so wants to save you. Amen. He's done all that he can so that you can have eternal life. Now, we've looked at several verses today that tell who Jesus is from the New Testament. These verses that teach us about who Jesus is, but many, many verses in the Old Testament as well, written years and years as prophecies of his birth, written years before he was born, teach us the same thing. That he is the Son of God, he's the Savior, and that God would display his love for us by sending his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. Isaiah 11.5 gives us another name of Jesus, if you'd like to turn there. Isaiah chapter 11. We're going to look at verses 1 through 5. Oh, we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. In that song, there's a verse. We didn't sing it this morning, but there's a verse that says, O come, thou rod of Jesse, free thine own from Satan's tyranny, from depths of hell thy people save, and give them victory over the grave. Isaiah chapter 11, 1 through 5 is where that verse comes from in that song. Isaiah chapter 11, 1 through 5 say, 
There shall come forth a rod, a capital R, talking about Jesus, a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. A prophecy of Jesus Christ coming forth. During World War II, Hitler's bombers rained destruction upon London from the skies. And over 15,000 people in London lost their lives as many parts of the city were reduced to rubble. But an interesting thing happened later on that spring when spring came. Beautiful wildflowers began to bloom in the city all over. Many of these wildflowers botanists had thought were extinct. But they sprang up in the middle of all this wreckage, in the middle of all this devastation, and the botanists concluded that the seeds had laid dormant under buildings and other structures until the bomb blast exploded and gave them an opportunity to germinate. In the scripture we just read, the Old Testament prophet Isaiah foresaw a day when Israel would also be devastated. The word stem used in this scripture means a stump. And David's lineage would be decimated. His family tree would be chopped down to a stub. Yet God would be faithful. And out of that stump would come the one. He was of the house and lineage of David. Of that stump would come the one who would be the savior of the world. And at a time when civilization would be devastated by the effects of sin, when the rubble of broken lives would be scattered over the countryside, a branch from a tree long thought dead would appear and bring the promise of new life. And so it happened. The apostle Paul declared this in Galatians 4, 4 and 5. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Listen to me this morning, so I begin to close. If the landscape of your life looks like London, it's been ravaged by discouragement, ravaged by despair, then look to Jesus today, who's able to bring the hope of new life. Or perhaps this morning you feel insignificant, like the shepherds. Maybe you've got some health problems that make you feel like you're living in a war zone in your life. Or maybe family problems have created craters deep enough to swallow you whole. Just as he promised, God will still be faithful to you. He will take that stump of your life that's left, that you feel like's left, and then you watch him grow a healthy and a prosperous branch from that stump. Only the rod of Jesse can give you such hope. And the rod of Jesse is Jesus Christ, the Savior. This, this is Christ the King. Would you receive Him into your life today? Let's pray. Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank You for what You've spoken to us today. Father, we are reminded that we are highly favored because You love us enough to send Your Son as an atoning sacrifice. For our sin. We're reminded that we're blessed because we have an opportunity to receive Jesus into our heart and be born again. We've been reminded that we have a reason to celebrate as the angels proclaim glory to you, Father. Glory in the highest. We've been reminded that though we may feel insignificant, may, we may feel even depressed and discouraged during this Christmas season. You see us just as you saw those lonely shepherds in the fields. 
You know exactly how we're feeling. Whether it be fear or worry or loneliness or whatever it might be, you see us and you understand us. We thank you for that. We understand you have a purpose for our life. And Father, we've been reminded in so many ways today of just do that little baby is. This. this, this is Christ, the King, your Son, who's come as Savior to save us from our sin. And so, Father, I pray for anybody in this place today who's never made that decision. Maybe they've never truly understood, never truly known who Jesus is. And that the Holy Spirit revealed that to them today. And this morning, during this invitation time, that your Holy Spirit would guide them to accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. To be forgiven by the Savior who came to forgive us of our sins. To save us from our sin. Would you draw that person who needs salvation today to yourself? Or nothing I can say makes any difference. I can't save anybody. But Father, we pray to the power of your Holy Spirit you can save somebody today. Perhaps there are those here this morning who've been looking for a church home and they want to make Fairfield their church home. Make it abundantly clear to them that you're drawing them to this place. They might come and join us today. I know there's probably other needs in this place that maybe just concerns, burdens people are carrying. Or as we said last week, this altar should be empty. You open the doors to your, the, open the, uh, the, the, the way to your throne, Father, through prayer. We can come to you boldly. So, Father, I pray once again we have those who come out and lay their burdens at your feet today at this altar. You have your way, your will now. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's all stand this morning. If God's been speaking to you today, and you want to choose Jesus today and be saved, I'll be right here. It would be my joy to pray with you this morning so that you can know when you leave this place, heaven's going to be your home for all of eternity. God speaking to you today, don't ignore it. It may be scary, but you step out and you come. Bring somebody with you. You need to come and be saved today as we say. Follow the star to a place unexpected. Don't you believe after all we've rejected a child in a manger? Holy and small, the weakest of all. It's what we waited for. How many kings stepped down from their thrones? How many lords have abandoned their homes? How many greats have become the least for me? Savior, all that we have, whether costly or deep, because we believe. Oh, for His honor and frankincense, for His pleasure and perform the cross, He'll suffer to believe. this do we wait?
That's all right. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm glad I'm saved. Yeah, there you go. Know, and I'll say it. Amen. I think more of us need to say that. We need to share it. There you go. Let's not get in the hustle and bustle of the Christmas season and not forget about one another. That's right. You know that everybody in this room, everybody in the sound of my voice has got a friend, a family member, or someone that they need to be on this altar praying for. Amen. And we need to be doing that. Yeah. That's what's going to get this country back where it needs to be. Hey, preach it, preach it. Come right up here. Keep on. Put this little guy old boy. The Lord is saying, I had to learn it. But it was free. I didn't have to learn it. It wasn't about that. It was about the Lord speaking to your heart. And when you speak to your heart, you need to listen. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Ron. Thank you for sharing those words with me. Anybody else? All right. Well, God bless you. I hope you have a great afternoon. If you get bored this afternoon and you want something to do, I am playing the community band. We have a concert at 4 o'clock at Walter State this afternoon. And uh, so if you'd like to come, it's going to be some great Christmas music, just instrumental Christmas music at 4 o'clock. Uh, if you'd like to come to Walter State and uh, be part of that concert, it'll be good, I believe. So uh, come and join us at Walter State at 4. If not, take you a good Sunday afternoon nap. Get ready for the week ahead, right? And so we can go and be full of energy as we go and serve the Lord tomorrow. Well, God bless you. Have a great day. Uh, I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night. Don't forget our business meeting. And uh, we've got some, all those exciting things we have coming up. Robert, would you care to just miss us in prayer today, Father, thank you for this opportunity. Father, thank you for our church. Lord, for some of our pastors, I will have some of you take part week in and week out. Keep this church operating. Listen to your words, Father, and share it with us. With our Father, adults, and children, all of the Lord, we just pray. I ask Father that we have those people and just pray God that you give them a special blessing, Father, for that. Not this time, but I'm a holy year, Father. Father, we just pray, Father, for our ability, Father, I want to lift up all the requests, Father, I want to have a conversation for each one and every one of the heart going. Ask him just as humble as we can, Father, and ask him to have your way and your way with each one of those situations. Lord, as we depart from this place, we ask you to watch over us, lead us, and guide us to your next appointed time. In your name I do pray, amen. <laughs>